in the Singapore market, what's most attractive is dividends. SDI is the best place to get dividends because there's no dividend tax. Whereas US market, you get a 30% dividend tax. So US market purely for capital gains. If you're trying to get dividends in the, in the US market, it's an uphill battle. Oh, but Singapore market, you want to get dividends, is easy game. It's, it's where you can get high yield. So uh, if you're a new investor, you want to have immediate diversification. But not everyone is like AK71 like that. Wow, I got $3 million. Can buy 100K, 500K, put into single REIT like that. Also, you don't have the power to, to own like 10 or 20 uh, different REITs. So let's say you only got 10,000, 50,000, how you want to invest, you can just buy a, a ETF. Just like in the US market, if you want capital gains, you can buy QQQ, get access to all the tech companies. Also QQQ, if you want capital gains, just DCA every month. Then if you want dividends, you can just DCA into the Singapore REITs. Also, a lot of platforms allow you to DCA into REITs, uh, those discount brokers. So among the five uh, listed risk ETF right only two of them I, I, I like only or like those with overseas exposure like the this one Australia 56% I, I don't want because if you buy risk right you want only pure Singapore play uh, so that you know what are the assets which shopping mall which office building which industrial park that they own and second is you don't have forex risk example you you buy like this risk that is 56% or 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 Australia assets. So you have to be bullish on the Australia economy. You have to be bullish on the Aussie currency. You in the past, uh, Aussie was like 1.8, 1.5, then now one Aussie dollar equals to one Singapore dollar. Because Australia is also di dinosaur uh, economy. It's an old country already. So Aussie weakened a lot against the Sing dollar. And one thing is that uh, Sing dollar is a very strong currency. You notice that like I show your Aussie, Japanese yen, uh, Euro dollar, they, and even US dollar, all the currencies over the past 10 years has weakened against Sing dollar. Singapore is a very strong currency because our economy is strong. We have a lot of reserves. Th thanks to your, every, all thanks to the people who like to top up their CPF. Then their money is lent to GIC and Temasek, or where they borrow at 4% and they make 10%. That's why our Soviet wealth funds are, are now like 500 billion each, the Tamasic and GIC, and their dividends are, are now funding our government budget. That's why Singapore economy is very strong. Our Sing dollar is very strong. If you invest in any overseas currency like this one, you have Japanese exposure, then now the Japanese yen is crashing. Then you lose on, on the Forex. Yeah, so I, I don't like overseas exposure like, due to the, the Forex risk. So keep it simple, just go for pure Singapore play. So we look at uh, these two weeks. Uh, the Nikko AM, uh, this one is actually quite okay, but they have this Hong Kong exposure is for the uh, the Hong Kong weeks. I think it's the first Ling weeks. Ling weeks. Uh, yeah, it's the biggest blue chip weeks in the Hong Kong market. So that makes up uh, 13%, which is also uh, commercial, uh, like shopping malls and office. So nothing wrong if, if you understand this one, then it's okay. But for newbie, uh, it's even better just to be 100% uh, Singapore. Then for this, right, their expenses is not very high, 0.6%, uh, still manageable. But for me, if you are a seasoned investor, you want to avoid uh, paying management fees. But if you want a new, you are a new investor, you want diversification, 0.6, still okay. So for the Lion Philip read, right, the IPO price was $1 back in 2017, 2018 like that. So that's like five years ago. Well, IPO price is one dollar, but now it's down twenty percent. So a lot of all those dividend investors tell you, "Wow, the power of CD, wow, it's in power, wow, passive income, one year thirty k, fifty k." But actually, their portfolio is in red, lah. I, I would say that most REIT investors, their portfolio is actually sitting of paper losses. Some of they always do the rest issue, rest issue, when you keep getting more and more shares, and <laughs> when the when the stock price is very high. Then they do rest issue. You are forced to buy more shares at the top. So that's what I don't like about REITs. It's the rest issue at the peak and you are forced to, to buy more shares right at the top. So from the IPO price right now of $1, now they are 82 cents. So it's down 18% from the IPO price and 52 weeks uh, 
now they are they are near the 52 week low in fact most reits are 52 week low already so it's down uh uh 16 percent from the 52 week high or oh, 98 cents down or oh, to now 82 cents so over the past five six years mostly it bounced around the one dollar level or oh, very bullish it can go to like 1.1 1.2 then now bear is like 80 cents also uh 80 cents so if you want to buy i would say that the first entry maybe 80 cents then any risk purchase right you must use a three bullet or how many bullet approach don't all in like your portfolio is thirty thousand right don't thirty thousand wet all at eighty cents if you're thirty thousand you split into three bullet ten k ten k ten k eighty cents you wet or uh ten k go in seventy cents you wet another ten k sixty cents you wet another ten k you go to fifty cents then so be it because it it cannot go to zero am I right cannot be zero but cannot be inside is all blue chip with then all go to you cannot right so there is always value inside one it won't go to zero so the lower it is the more you buy then the lower it is the higher your yield so what i don't like about this read is that uh, it has rubbish reads like manual life uh read uh comwell uh capable pacific also all these are overseas reads that are traded in us dollar that assessed in us and europe so the the yield is like uh 6.2 percent yeah so this makes me a bit uncomfortable so i don't like this read so much but this read and the other read is okay but together right this three they only add up about five percent of their weightage so still okay but look at their top weightage is all the solid blue chip reads or like that like mict that like, but it's all under the maple capital and fake and fraser family one so look at their top position it's all very blue chip reads so mostly it's blue chip reads so it's very solid so newbie investor is okay then the dividend yield is 6.2 percent so if you get in at let's say 80 cents your yield is about 6.5 percent 6.5 percent you whack 7.5 percent you whack 8 percent 8.5 percent you whack so overall you get 7.5 percent so people might say oh uh wow uh is this makes sense or not so uh depends on whether you want something risk free or you want to take risk if you choose the risk free path right, you put in the Singapore long term bonds you get four percent risk free or if rates go higher it might go to five percent or do you want to take some risk you own a basket of risk or paying you a yield of six point five seven point five eight point five percent yeah so if you are young like or then or you want to take more risk okay but even if you are old let's say you are like 50 60s then you are retired for you need passive income oh I don't I think it's a mistake if you put hundred percent of your portfolio in just like CPF and fixed deposit you get four percent you should have some you should take some risk and, and put in higher you assets for six seven or even eight percent but those super high you one are like the I reads ha huh? the uh, Asia uh, pay TV trust are uh, and all the and the, this three overseas reads are uh, when those reads are uh, that pay you too high you want eight percent ten percent during normal environment those are very high risk reads then those you should avoid only go for the the blue chip reads so that's why the the read that I prefer is this one this one the CSOP read so CSOP is actually a, a Hong Kong Chinese fund manager la. they have a lot of risk in the Hong Kong market so I, I, I'm quite surprised they, they list their risk in the Singapore market which is their new entry la. so I think the IPO two years ago in 2021 at the IPO price of one dollar or well, most of the time they IPO at one dollar so it's easy to track where's the base value so it's already down 25 percent from the ipo price uh, what 25 percent discount uh, it's still the same basket of risk then it's down 17 percent from the 52 week high so you see all the risks all the risk chart is all a downtrend so do you want to buy risks when they are sideways do you want to buy risks when they are going up or do you want to buy risks when they are going down so obviously for me right i want to be greedy when others are fearful when they are selling i want to buy and this is actually the reads that i recommend the most the read etf this one i feel is the better one why because you don't have the manual life reads all those rubbish reads it's all the blue chip reads uh, inside it follows the uh, ihs read leader index so when when you go to the sgx website right you you should see the default reads index that one uh, based at 1000 value uh, that is the i read as a uh, read etf all is traded in sgd all is most liquid highest trading volume 
blue chip Singapore SGD REITs. So this is the one I like. And within it, uh, it has my five Tiger General, uh, which is the CICT, MPACT, uh, Kepler REIT, Suntech REIT, and uh, Fraser Center Point Trust. Yeah, so the dividend yield is about 6.1%. So it's comparable to the previous REITs. So both of them, the yield is about 6%. So I think it's, it's quite okay. And instantly, you get the diversification. So if your portfolio is very big, let's say you have $1 million, then you don't have to buy an ETF already. $1 million, you can split into 20 picks. Then each of these blue chip risks, you buy 50K. Then you buy into 20 blue chip risks. But for me, how I do it, right, is I will supercharge it. Why is is that? you are like a leader you are like king like that you are or you can choose or among your army right which are the generals that you want to select why you select 20 generals when some of them they are they are medical when you can choose the five strongest five most powerful general to lead your army so your one million dollar is is your army every single dollar is your troop you want them to be led by the strongest and most powerful general, which is the five tiger general, Wu Hu Chang. Also, Wu Hu Sang Chang oh, is like Romance of Three Kingdom under Liu Bei, is most five famous general. So, in my heart, right, my five tiger general, so everyone in their heart, uh, their five tiger general is different depending on what kind of asset allocation you like. For me, I don't like industrial risk. Industrial risk, their lifespan is very short, like business parks. Lah, uh, let's say like uh, manufacturing la, like logistics la, or warehouse the asset lifespan is 30 years only so short term the U is usually higher but long term the asset die off very fast that's why uh, industrial REITs right they tend to pay like 8% dividend U whereas commercial REITs they pay 6% dividend U the 2% difference is because of the asset the lifespan for me, 30 years is too short already because I believe I can live to 100 years old. So I got 60 more years to go. Master is 40 years old. So I prefer commercial assets like retail shopping mall or office asset. So in Singapore, office and the shopping mall, your lease is 99 years. So I can it can produce income for me until I die. Whereas industrial assets is only 30 years. So when the 30 years expire, the NAV will drop sharply. So I never buy industrial REITs. Right? And a lot of the so-called expert gurus, right, they don't explain this to you. You you see like Dividend Warrior, his portfolio, right, a lot of industrial rich, right. So in the first 10, 20 years, right, wow, his portfolio, the U looks very high. But when you go into your later stage, right, after 20 years, right, you will notice that your NAV will drop very fast. So if you own a, a set, right, let's say a HDB set, 99 years, right, the first 60, 70 years, right, your depreciation, are. Uh, is very slow but once your hdb right let's say left 30 years right the the value drop a lot nobody will buy a hdb flat that left 20 to 30 years same for industrial assets your lifespan only 30 years when the industrial assets left five or ten years right nobody will buy and you depreciate super fast your nav will crash so i don't like industrial assets but that's your pre preference if you are already 60 years old you only left 20 30 years to live then you buy industrial risk lah higher you ma you're not going to pass your portfolio to your son, am I right? Also, I prefer office and uh, shopping mall assets. Oh, but for me, currently, I'm not buying any REITs. Ah. I'm still vested in Alibaba and uh, SE. Just that I keep getting a lot of questions. Master, ah, what, what can buy? What can buy? So if I were you, let's say I'm 40 years old, then my portfolio is half growth, half dividend. My dividend portfolio, I won't buy ETF. But I don't want to pay the 0.6% management fees. And inside the ETF, right? There's hospitality risk, there's industrial risk, there's shopping malls, there's uh, office risk. It's very diversified. So you can go for the ETF. For me, I like to focus fire. Because I'm a stock picker. I go for quality, I go for higher risk, higher return. So my Guan Yu is CICT. <laughs> my Zhang Fei is MPAC. So my favorite is actually Zhao Yun. Zhao Yun is the most steady one. FCT, you look at their track record, DPU always go up. And their recent results, their DPU was actually flat. Whereas... Uh, a lot of these risks, their DPU is also coming down. So for the base case, right, if you buy a basket of these blue chip REITs, right, because of the higher interest rate environment, you should have a base case as a margin of safety that you expect the DPU to drop by 5% as a base case. At, at a very worst case as a whole, maybe the DPU will drop 
ten percent. So given that, right, based on the trailing twelve month DPU, ah, that means the past four quarters, right, this is their DPU, and the book value, right, NAV, right, is from the the latest, ah, June, ah, reporting. So as a whole, right, ah, first of all, all five of them they are trading at a discount to book value. So you see the experts, ah, like gurus, like AKs, tell you, oh, now don't buy, don't buy. Now is not a time to buy rich. You should hot cash. Then for me, right, as a layman, I'm thinking, bear market discount to book value. You don't buy. Then when you buy, then few years ago, bull market, normal market, you ask me to buy. When the rich trading at one time book value, one point two time book value, premium to book value, you ask Lim Pei to buy and buy and buy and buy and DCA. Now crash already, twenty percent, thirty percent discount. You ask me don't buy. It's stupid, right? It's come wrong, right? Oh, you the price high, you ask me buy the price low, you ask me don't buy is stupid, right? Yeah. So I think you should remove your emotions and be logical. You want to buy when it's selling at a discount to book. So overall, if your portfolio is like this, you are getting about one quarter discount to book value. So that's your margin of safety, and your dividend yield is six point three eight percent. Oh, that's not say a super high dividend yield. Yes, you can go and buy the IRIS lah. Oh. Follow AK buy the IRIS ah, wow German asset lah, wow very high quality lah, wow eight percent, ten percent you, then two zero two six you realize that they renew their sixty percent of their debt one shot in one year, then you don't know what's the interest rate. If the interest rate they renew at is five six percent, the whole portfolio explode just like what happened to the Manual Life read. Yeah, so you want to buy a a a a read that can be that Manual Life ah can drop ninety percent one ah, then go ahead you go and buy the overseas asset. For me, if you want to sleep well at night, then you must buy solid one like the Five Tiger General. Can the Five Tiger General they they will go bankrupt or not? Cannot be one, right? Imagine, oh your 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 blue chip bid ah go bankrupt ah. That means if any of the Five Tiger General ah they go bankrupt drop to zero ah, it means that all the medium and small cap bids are all die already. Oh, they so strong. Can you imagine Zhao Zhao Yun die? That means the small small lousy one ha is die until cannot die already ah. So these are the top quality one ah. If this five weeks cannot survive, ah, I confirm chop my cucumber, ah. All the smaller weeks are all die until cannot die already. Their DPU already drop, their book value drop until gone case already, ah. So these are the most solid one already. Yeah, so six point three eight percent. Is it attractive or not? Also, it must be relative. If you park risk free, you get four percent. You take risk, you get six point three eight percent. But you must factor in, ah. Let's say worst case, the DPU drop ten percent. So you shave off a six percent, a point six percent. So you have some margin. So base case, at least, at least you are getting five point five percent you. But this is not a point where you go all in. Like I mentioned, if you want to buy the five tiger general, you let's say now you want to buy the five tiger general, you fire your first bullet. If it drops another ten percent, you fire your second bullet, collecting seven point five percent you. Then it drops another ten percent, you fire your third bullet. Getting eight point five percent you, so you actually hope that the risk crash more. You fire, crash ten percent. You fire, so you fire three bullet. Then overall, you can build your position and you can get seven point five percent dividend. So seven point five percent. Let's say I I in my fifties. Oh, then I want to fire already. I got one million dollar. So I three hundred thousand. I whack. Then it drop. Whack another three hundred thousand. Then it drop again. Whack another four hundred thousand. Show hand already. Then one million dollar portfolio collecting seven point five percent. That is like seventy five k per year. Then each month I'm getting six k passive income. So six k per year is it enough or not? Confirm enough. Even if inflation five percent, chicken rice the price double to eight dollar or chicken rice go to ten dollar. Chicken rice twenty dollar. I also not scared because I'm getting six thousand dollar in monthly passive income. Yeah. So if your U is high, you can fight inflation. But you collect four percent, you put in CPF, you put in government bond, ah, the chicken rice go to ten dollar. Oh, you also scared, ah, you also scared, ah, you you your interest not enough, ah. Oh, so that's my thinking, lah. But how they no wrong, no right. If you're very rich, rich adverse, then you don't buy. You scared, you don't buy. But if you are willing to be a contrarian, to buy the five tiger general when everybody do want it, I think you will be greatly rewarded, lah. Oh, so at the end of the day, right. It's very simple one. Now ah, you just imagine that it's a storm. 
哇 ，heavy rain thunderstorm， 哇 ，at the CBD area， 哇 ，flooding already， 哇 ，but but in scared 啊 ，will die or not？ Then this old man 啊，哇 ，say higher for longer 啊，哇 ，the the the higher he point right， 哇 ，the rain heavier and heavier。So in a storm， what kind of boat do you want to sit？ Do you want to be in a cruise？ Oh, then you are protected from the rain. Wow, you, you just sleep. You on aircon, on music. Ah, storm, storm. Ah, wow, your cruise still very stable. Not scared of the storm. So that's the blue chip risk, like the five tiger general. Or oh, storm is here already. Wow, higher for longer. Then you you are sitting on the sampan. You are on high risk. Ah, you are on the what? Ah, oh, I don't know. Ah, I don't know. All the mid cap, small cap risk. Ah, oh, sampan. Ah, so you choose. Ah, for for me, right? I think now. But but ask me what the, I let's say I I'm holding a lot of small cap mid cap risk. What should I do? Should sell them away or not? Or should you jump off your boat? My answer is you should switch your boat lah. Oh, you already know the storm is here. Then you you still you want to stay on the sampan? Oh, like like this guy the costume looks familiar lah. Or looks like the guy holding the eye risk. So you want to so this boat is eye risk. Or do you want to be on eye risk? Or do you want to be on the five tiger general? Or you choose your vehicle lah. Which one you want to tight through the Scott Storm? Or if you very confident ah, the storm come ah, your sampan will not tow ah, will not flip ah. Then good, good for you. You you confident? You do your due diligence ah. You know that your the risk you hold ah, see be solid one ah. Powell whack the rates to six percent ah. You renew your debt ah. Your your balance sheet still strong ah. The your stock price can hold ah. Oh, then okay, good for you. Then you you write your sampan. For me, I don't know. I don't know. That's why. I will go for the blue chip bits only. So if you ask me, master, now can buy bits or not? I say yes, can buy. But you must buy the right one, ah. You must buy the blue chip bits, like the five tiger general, even storm. How big, ah? You know the the boat, ah, won't won't flip one, ah. Oh, cannot be the capital, ah, in integrated commercial trust, what drop eighty percent? Cannot be what? If C I C T crash eighty percent, ah, that means all the boat, ah, all the other smaller bits all tow already, ah. Oh, so. Higher interest rate, right? Is like a storm. Example: the risk free rate goes to four or five percent. Then you are the bank. You need to lend money. I park with my money with the central bank. I get five percent risk free. I buy the central bank bonds. I get five percent risk free. You, the risk, come and borrow money from me. I'm DBS Bank. You want to renew your debt? Okay lah. You are CICT lah. I think CICT you blue chip risk. The market back. Okay lah. I lend you the money lah. Risk free rate is five percent. I lend you at five point five lah. I I mark up fifty basis point. I earn a bit more, and I feel that you quite safe. So blue chip risk, they can borrow cheap at five point five percent. So now their average interest cost is three percent. If they over the few years they renew their debt at five point five percent, will they survive? Yes. DPU will drop a bit. Maybe DPU drop five percent, ten percent is okay. They will survive the the storm. The boat get scratched a bit. But if you are sampan boat, small boat, you go to DBS. Oh, I'm sampan boat. Oh, Gupa, I want to renew my 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 bonds. Eh, my my debt due already. Can you lend me money? Lend me at five point five percent. Oh no. Also, what what the poor you Gupa say? Gupa say fuck you. Five point five percent only for blue chip reads. Ah, you ah ah go ah mau reads. Ah, want to borrow eight percent? Eight percent I lend you. Ah, then you you collateralize all your the asset. Ah, because I afraid the economy down. Ah, your asset only. One dollar don't have worth fifty cent only. You want me to lend you? I lend you eight percent. Eight percent you don't want. You go and find other bank. Ah, what? Ah, you don't borrow now, man. I just part with the bank five percent, with the central bank five percent. So you imagine the small cap rich they renew their debt at six percent, eight percent, or even ten percent. What is their DPU impact? Their DPU can crash in the global financial crisis two o seven, two o eight. Ames rich, Sizen rich, they crash ninety percent from one dollar. Drop to ten cent because they try to renew their debt. The banks don't want to lend them. They have to do placements, rush issue at rock bottom price. Some bank rates they can crash ninety percent during a crisis. But how big is the crisis? I don't know. If Powell keep it at five point five percent or raise it to six percent, I don't know. But if Powell raise to six percent, the the cruise will survive. If Powell raise to six percent, the some bank will flip. But after the the storm won't last forever. The high interest rate environment won't last forever. In the end, rates will normalize. The sun will shine after the storm. Also, if you are a rate holder, you buy. You must have at least the patience, ah, to hold at least three to at least five years, ah.